Hey, this is Robert, and uh, today I'm going to show you how to use our new Weather 2 Forecast After Effects template. Um, this template is, uh, uh, works with uh, Adobe After Effects CS3 um, through the latest version of After Effects. Um, basically, it's a whole production package for any type of uh, weather or meteorology um, type uh, video production. Um, it has uh, multiple setups, multiple different kinds of animations. Everything is uh, everything is completely layered, so you can go in there and uh, change around logos, change around colors, um, add the information. Um, everything's very easy to kind of go in, edit, um, and export really quickly, so that you can uh, uh, use this production package in your uh, in your animation. So. Uh, Basically, the first thing I'm going to do is when you purchase this, uh, this template, um, you download a zip file, um, whether to AEP for After Effects project um, zip file. And so the first thing that you need to do, whether or not you're on a Mac or a PC, is to uh, double click the zip or open up the zip file and extract all the files. Um, on Windows here, um, we can just hit extract all files and it will extract them as for our destination and we shall extract them. If you try to open up the, uh, the project file without extracting all the files, um, the project won't be able to see um, uh, the project files within the zip file, and so you're going to have a bad time. Um, okay, so now that we've got all the files extracted, um, you'll see that we have uh, two folders and a After Effects project file. Um, footage basically is uh, all the different footage within the uh, within the um, animations. And then tutorials, um, we basically have uh, a couple of um, example um, tutorials that kind of show you how to uh, uh, edit the files and that kind of thing. Um, so those can be helpful. Um, and then we have the weather2 um, underscore CS3 After Effects project. And uh, this file can be used in uh, CS3 um, and above. So if you have uh, CS4, CS5, CS5.5, or CS6, or greater, um, then you'll be able to open up this file and uh, play with it. So I'm going to double click it, which will open it up in After Effects. Okay, um, so I'll open this up in, uh, I actually got CS5, and since it was created in CS3, it'll just kind of bark at you for a second and say, hey, um, this was made on an older version of After Effects, we're going to uh, update it. Um, but the original files will be unchanged. So just hit OK. It'll update everything as it needs to, and uh, you shouldn't have any trouble or issues or anything like that. Um, so the first thing that you'll see is uh, you'll see the project, and you'll see all the different folders that make up the project, and then um, down here are all the compositions um, that are kind of the final renders for the, uh, for the project itself. Um, so the folders, we have a five-day forecast, um, seven-day forecast, Almanac, uh, a coming up from promo type animation. Um, these are pieces of footage that are used in the animation. Um, these are solid colors that are used. Um, a today's forecast type animation, a uh, transition, and then the weather icons that make up uh, sunny, rainy, snowy, partly cloudy, that kind of thing. Um, okay, so uh, to start with, let's just kind of go through um, how you would... Um, um, start up and edit a seven-day forecast. Um, so if you had a uh, television, if you had a uh, student news production or um, you were doing something where you're doing a seven-day forecast every day or every couple of days in your um, in your video production class or in your uh, for your television station, then you could basically go in here real quick and uh, update these, uh, these this information, the icons, and then have your seven-day forecast ready to output and ready to go. Um, so, the um, uh, seven-day forecast um, is in this edit uh, weather composition right here, and uh, we tried to make it so that each uh, composition that has edit in the title is kind of where you go in to edit what the um, what displays uh, in the weather forecast. So, if you double-click in um, on this second layer here, you'll be taken to that composition where you see basically it's just the isolated uh, days of the week and numbers and that kind of thing. And so you'll see that we have uh, the different icons 
that make up the um, forecast. And then you'll also see that we have uh, the different days here that are these uh, entire little backgrounds. And you'll also see that it says edit Friday, edit Thursday, edit Wednesday. That basically means that within this composition, you'll be able to edit these, uh, these numbers or there's something to edit within those compositions. Um, so first off, if you wanted to change around um, the forecast, then what you would need to do is um, move um, weather icons around. Um, you can also duplicate weather icons. So if you had three sunny days um, in a row, you could um, do that. And so the easiest way to do that is to um, uh, basically lock down if you uh, click on the lock icon next to all these different layers and uh, lock down everything so that you can't click in here and drag. Um, and then what we can do is unlock the, uh, the items that we want to move around in the scene. So let's say um, we have uh, three um, sunny days, um, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and those are going to be three sunny days. And so we have uh, the sunny icon right here. Um, i turn that one on and off like that. And then the next one we have is rain and then snow. And so we're not going to use the, uh, the rain and the snow icons because we're going to make them both just be sunny. And so what we're going to do is instead of deleting them, I'm just going to um, hide them from view by uh, clicking the eyeball here in the layer. And then if you click on the sunny, you know, unlock it, and you click on the sunny layer, if you hit Control D, that will duplicate the layer. And so now we have two sunnies. And so you can click and drag or use your keyboard to position the icon where it needs to go. So then I'll hit Control D again and then position there. So we have three sunny days and then we have uh, let's say partly cloudy right there. Go ahead and lock those other layers there. We've got partly cloudy, um, clouds, and then it gets overcast and then it gets thunderstormy again. Um, and so let's say, let's say it doesn't get thunderstorm, let's say it gets snowy on Friday. Um, so what I'll do is I'll unlock uh, the snowy layer that we used over there. I'll hide thunderstorms and then I will move snowy over to Friday there. Just like that. All right, so I'll lock these other layers. Um, and so now we've kind of customized what the, uh, what the days of the week uh, has for the uh, for the different forecasts and whatnot, um, but now we need to change the uh, the numbers here. We've got 85, you know, all the way through, and uh, obviously it's not going to snow if it's 85 degrees outside. And so what you can do is uh, unlock. You can unlock all these uh, these day layers here. And uh, <clears throat> since that one's Friday, let's change. We'll double click on Edit Friday, and then in this layer here, we'll just double click on the text and say that the high is going to be, let's say, 40. And then the low will be 25. And so you can just double click on that layer or select your text um, thing there. And then that will give you, uh, that'll allow you to do that. And uh, so once you do that, you can um, close that um, Edit Friday composition. And it'll take you back to your main thing there. And then basically just do that for each, uh, for each different day. You just double click on the composition, um, open it up, go in here, change your highs and your lows, and then close it. And so there you go. Um, once you're done changing all of your, uh, your days to exactly what you want, you can close that edit weather composition. And now we have our seven day forecast. And you can see that it animates in and has all the changes that we made. Before we move on, I'll just kind of show you that all these different layers, um, you can really customize this, uh, this animation any way that you kind of see fit. Um, everything is uh, layered, so you have uh, a gradients layer, you have this kind of looping um, clouds background layer, uh, you have this little top curve thing. So you can turn things on and off. You can reposition them. You can, um, you know, change the, um, the color. Um, if you do a color correction on just on this clouds layer, um, you can change 
you know, the overall look of the animation, depending on what you do want to do. Um, you can add, uh, you know, a logo to this little bug up here. Um, you can uh, change this text to whatever you need it to be. Um, you can do just about anything that you want. Uh, moving on, we have uh, so we have the seven-day forecast. We also have the five-day forecast. Um, this animation is basically the same is the same deal. So if you want to go in and change any of this content in here, you just go to uh, the edit weather uh, composition, double click it, come in, change around the icons. Um, since this is five day, we have two icons that are turned off, and you can turn them on. You can duplicate them copy and paste them, that kind of thing. Um, then you have your edit buttons as well. Um, and one thing I forgot to say on the last one was that you can change the day at the top here as well. You can just change that um, so that uh, the day of the week is correct for what you're doing. Close that. Let me close that. And so basically the five-day forecast works almost exactly the same as the, uh, the seven-day forecast. Then um, the next uh, composition that we have here is the uh, weather almanac and so a lot of uh, uh, meteorology and um, weather uh, forecast type uh, uh, segments will show that you know some sort of almanac basically just has uh, averages and highs and lows and average you know record highs record lows um, that kind of thing for uh, different areas um, and so you can go in and uh, basically change all this information here and same kind of difference you have uh, a layer called almanac right there and uh, you can um, you can double click this almanac layer um, get into it and there's a edit almanac info so basically click this uh, edit almanac info composition double click it and it takes you to a page where you've got all of your uh, editable text that you can change um, to update so you can change um, just about any of the information you can change you know even if you want to change high and low and today and average and record, um, you can go in there and change that. But you can just change the uh, content of the text layers, you know, that kind of thing, um, to uh, whatever you need it to be. So you can set it here. Um, and then you can click to close it, close that one, and we're back to the, uh, to the almanac. And uh, each of these, uh, each of the compositions that are made to be the final rendered compositions um, from this animation um, have a render um, in the composition name. So you've got render seven day forecast, render five day forecast, render weather albanac, etc. That way you know that this is the, the final render renderable version of this composition. And so next we have uh, the coming up um, motion background. And basically, this one is um, is just kind of a um, um, motion animation that people can use between segments or between forecasts or before they go to a break or something like that. And uh, and you can change this text to uh, be whatever you want it to be, um, if you'd like. Um, there, so you can change that um, to be whatever you want it to be. Um, yeah. Um, so you've got uh, a composition called Edit Top Title and Edit Main Title. Um, and you can go in there and change that uh, text within those uh, areas to whatever you want it to be. Um, you also have all these different layers that you can turn on and off if uh, you don't like something or if you want to kind of change things around, um, change colors, add your, you know, you could add an image back here instead of this clouds image, that kind of thing. Make it a little more custom for whatever your production um, needs are. Um, the next uh, thing we have is uh, today's forecast. Um, and this is a uh, kind of a seg uh, portion. This is kind of an animation where uh, you could have somebody uh, shot on a green screen who's maybe standing um, in this area of the screen. And uh, you can kind of see in our preview um, how we have that where we've got somebody who kind of walks into the scene. Um, you could do a full body shot of somebody so they could like actually stand right here. Um, or it could just be kind of a torso up shot um, so they're kind of like right around that area. Um, Basically the same thing there. You've got um, uh, a full forecast animation to where it comes in, and then uh, this information you can edit uh, to be whatever you need it to be. And so you can click on it. Um, you have all the different, we've already got this icon set up for you, so you can just turn off and on the different icons. 
for the production. And then um, the um, got your text here where you can say, you know, you can give a little, it's sunny out or something like that. Um, and then the day info, you can click that and change 75. Um, we'll click that out of that, close that composition, and you're kind of back to there. Um, so what you can do if you're doing a live production, um, you can you can actually go ahead and, and um, pre-set up this uh, this animation, um, and then uh, shoot your uh, person on a live um, chroma key background, and then key this animation, queue it up um, as needed. Um, so if you were to uh, do something. You basically just pre-plan it, um, set up the animations, go ahead and render them out, have the rendered out animations, um, bring those into your, uh, however your production is set up, um, and then do a real-time key with your uh, talent on top of the, uh, on top of the background here. Um, this weather transition here is uh, basically just a uh, uh, kind of an animation segue where um, you have this little animation that goes by and gets taken out. And so it just kind of depends on your production and how things work um, if you're uh, doing this in post-production or um, in live production. Um, if your uh, uh, production gear can import animation files and do a, uh, a live key with an alpha channel um, over top of uh, footage, um, you could use this to transition from your uh, uh, news team to your weather team, um, something like that. Um, you can also just kind of come in here and customize uh, with the different layers um, and, you know, add a logo in the center here or move this animation down a little bit, um, customize it a little bit. But it's basically just kind of a transition. So if you, <clears throat> if you do your production in like a post-production, more post-production type environment, then you can um, uh, render this animation with an alpha channel and use it as a uh, transition. Um, on top of your um, timeline, um, or if you do your production more in After Effects, then you could just bring this composition and place it on top of your timeline and, uh, and render it out that way. Um, this final composition here, this render weather icons um, composition, is basically just uh, the, uh, the different weather icons. Um, and so they're just isolated, so if you wanted to uh, render these out and use them in a certain way, um, use them for, for, you know, another composition or something like that, um, then you can um, render them out and then isolate them and uh, do whatever you need to kind of, you know, make them work for you. Um, yeah, and then once, you, um, once you've created your, uh, your animation um, and customized it, uh, customized like your seven-day forecast the way you want it, um, you can basically um, uh, click on your composition and go to Composition, Make Movie. And uh, once you have, um, once you're ready to render out your animation, um, you have your seven day forecast or whatever it is that you're rendering out, uh, you'll just want to click on the, uh, the render um, version of the composition. So render seven day, render five day, render weather, render coming up, render today's, that kind of thing. Um, click on that and then go to Composition, Make Movie. And then uh, on your output module, um, you'll basically click on where it says Lossless right there. And that's where you get to choose uh, what format um, you want your final animation in. So if it's uh, QuickTime or uh, AVI or uh, a JPEG sequence or whatever, whatever type of um, video animation you're outputting, um, you select that. Um, if you put any audio into the animation, then you can um, select the audio output to go. And then uh, you output to, you tell it where to render the, uh, the, fi the file to. And then once you're ready, you just click on render, and, uh, and you can uh, render out the animation. It'll render for you here. And it's actually pretty a fairly quick render. It's not, it's not too complicated of a render. So if you have a decent computer, um, it'll render out pretty fast. 
that's really about it. If you have any questions or anything, um, please do get in touch with us. We'll put a link in the descriptions of this of this video um, so that you can click and uh, get in touch with us. Um, also, we um, I mean we do have this this file um, for sale on our site, um, so we'd love to have you as a customer. And uh, so, thanks for watching this video. And yeah, appreciate you taking the time, and um, hope to see you soon.